We started. Okay, one moment. Last week we started yeah. the, uh, chapter five. Yeah. Mission uh, two. Just no, actually we started before. Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, we started. Yeah, we started to we discussed a little bit a couple of things of uh, this was already uh, we are in the second mission we started to speak about the 10 remember that I said the Mishnayot couple of uh, Mishnayot that we read there that as the number 10 as a theme, something that you know with number, with number 10, started with a 10 statement that God made when he created the world, then 10 generations from Adam to Noach to show our God was patient with the, with the people, the generation, because from the time of, started from the time of Adam Rishon, the first man was a gradual, uh, the, 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 the generation spiritually of the people until it came the time of Noah. And, uh, and, uh, and then it was the Mabul came, the flood destroyed the world. And then the new world comes with the beginning of Abraham, Abraham. And then, then the Mishnah said that about the 10 generation that from Noah until Abraham, and again, talking about the patient that as that God uh, showed until came Abraham, and he actually uh, took the reward of all of them. Of all of them means for the generations beforehand if there was still <clears throat> good things that had to be uh, rewarded, Abraham, he took all, all the... And then uh, we spoke about, and I don't remember if we did or not, but uh, <clears throat> um, I want to see what... Uh, <clears throat> so the, the, the number 10, one of the commentators said that the 10 statement or 10 generation, it is a kind of a opposite to the 10 commandments. God gave the 10 commandments, the, the generations, the 10 generations actually with their wickedness acted against the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Generations were basically sins which were committed against God. At Noach, in Noach's uh, case, his, his uh, generation, and interested that, uh, interesting that Hashem here uh, decided to bring end to the world because this was a generation that was among people, the people between men and men. Society was rotten 
with the relationship between people. So, so to speak, God showed patience for 10 generations from the time of Noah, uh, so, sorry, from the time of uh, Adam to Noah, he was patient, but it came because that all that was a the deterioration that people started to act against God. Sorry, can, then, I, can I ask a question, Ira? Yes. There was no terror on what would the people base their behavior up till then. Good. Good question. So it was basic basic uh, thing that was was uh, expected number one god they knew who is god but they, they started to deteriorate as as aramba mamodis mamodis says they it was a gradual thing. First, they made, let's say, certain images that originally was meant that this will represent God. With the time, God was completely out of the picture with them, and they started to be idol idolatry. Idol worship. So this were a basic thing that for this you don't need the Torah. Although that uh, according to Chazal to rabbis that uh, doesn't uh, from the time <clears throat> of Avot or uh, Avraham they actually did have knowledge about what the Torah is going to to give to to be and they try to start to act accordingly. But we are talking about basic things and between men and men like uh, killing each other killing people, stealing, this is what we call sins between men Adam between the men and men. Here, God saw that there is no, no hope. And therefore, he brought, he brought the world to an end with the with the flood. And why did he wait for ten generations from the beginning? What did he do? So God, this is what the mission says. God erachapaim. And God has got his, his patience. He was had patience to wait and gave a chance to people to change until he came to a point that he saw that there is no, no point to let it completely to be destroyed. So therefore, he decided that this world is, has got the hope, we start a new world. Um, <clears throat> also, so this is what happened from Adam to Noah. And then the continuation of the Mishnah 
but sometimes it is in one Mishnah, sometimes in the, the second Mishnah, where the 10th generation from Noach had Abraham, here again, there is a generations which show, was ma mainly, mainly um, uh, sins between people. And again, Hashem was, was patient. But came, here came Abraham who, who saved the world. Abraham saved the world. And therefore, we don't see that was another uh, Mabul, another flood. <clears throat> The here the commentary says Hashem's patience was even greater that people had an opportunity to learn from the generations before how God punished uh, and the the, the uh, generation and they didn't learn they didn't learn the uh, lesson but uh, but uh, I still Hashem and his patience and came Avram in his merit the world was saved I pointed out, I don't think if uh, I did it come, I did I mention or not, what is the difference between Noach and Abraham? Noach, the Torah says, Noach Hayad, Ish Tzadik Tamim Hayab Bedorotav. Noach was a righteous man, a great man in his generation. So, seem to be there is, was such a tzaddik, nevertheless, he didn't save the world. Not like Abraham, that he was at the merit to save the world. So what was pointed out, that Noach, although that he was a righteous person, but he was righteous, for himself. In other words, he didn't care what happened in, in his time, in his generation, how the other people behave. He didn't try to influence others. He was quite satisfied and happy when Hashem said to him, go and build the Teva, the Ark, the ship, whatever we call it, because I'm going to bring a flood. We don't find that he asks questions, maybe give them more, more time, maybe there are some righteous people that should be saved. It seemed to me that he was quite, quite happy as long as he is going to be saved in life, then he was, this was Noach. Also, there is a disagreement how to explain what the Torah says, Noach it's a that Noach was a righteous, complete righteous man in his generation. What is the emphasis on his generation? Does he mean to say, to show, it's interesting, to show how righteous he was in spite of being in this generation 
of wicked people, which puts Noah in a good light, or other uh, interpretation, Noah was tzaddik only in each generation, means in, uh, in relatively to his wicked generation, he was a tzaddik. If he would be in a, in a generation like Abraham, he would not be considered at all. So this is, some people look at rabbis, look at Noach and with a great favor, and others say, yes, for the tzaddik, but only relatively to the generation can consider to be a tzaddik. But whatever the case is, even if they said that he was a big tzaddik and so on, and yet there is something which is very, very prominent between the difference between Abraham and Noach. As I said, Noach, when Hashem said to him, go and build the ark, because I'm going to bring a flood, we don't find any argument. Noach is doing it. He was building the, the Teva, according to our rabbis. It took him 120 years to build it. And Hashem still kept it. Not, it didn't hurry because, again, maybe to give a chance to, to the generation. But we don't find Noach trying to defend or uh, say to God, maybe you should uh, have mercy or whatever. It's not in the, like in the case of Abraham. Abraham's attitude was completely different. And uh, last week, I think I just uh, read certain things from the Medrash trying to uh, describe Abraham from his childhood, how huh? he stood up against his old generation who were idolaters, idolaters, even against his father, Terach, who was a uh, and the business of selling idols. And uh, Avram was once, Chazal tell us, once was asked to be in the shop of the idols. But he already, Avram, and he found out, he discovered that all this nonsense, there is only a God. He tried to influence others to keep them away from idolatry and even to try in his own family, which uh, didn't seem to succeed much. So he was standing, one day his father put him in the shop to be a salesman. And uh, there is, a, I think I read to you a story, a woman, comes asked to buy an idol and uh, and she wants to have an idol like like her herself. She was a poor woman, she was a poor idol. The other one is different, you know. <laughs> uh, got their gods the way that they are, they saw themselves as they wanted the duplicate of themselves. This is was their idea what God is. Abraham, when he discovered there is a God and uh, all the idolatry is nonsense, so when he stood in the shop one day, he broke all the idols in the shop. He only left the 
the bigger one by himself, and he gave this uh, idol put a stick in his hand. When his father came, and he saw what happened, chaos, all his idols are broken. And he asked, uh, Avon, what, what happened here? He said, look, you can see this big idol. He, with this stick, he broke all the idols. And, Avra, and the Terach, the father said, what are they talking nonsense? How can they do? Uh, they, uh, they, they can't move, they can't do anything. And this is exactly what Abraham wanted to bring out. So you don't believe that they, yeah, that the idols can, they can do anything. So how do you believe that they can be gods and they are responsible for your life, for the world, and so on? Ridiculous. So what I, what Chazal tell us that Abraham went out of his way. He wasn't satisfied that only he discovered God. He died also to influence other people to accept God and to remove them from idolatry. And uh, Chazal said that he, in fact, he went from one place to another to preach for it. This is one end. On the other end, also, in contrast to the generation of, uh, of the behavior of Noah, Abraham also had uh, he acted a lot for the welfare of other people. It's known that uh, he, had, he had like a chnasa sorchim, an hotel or, 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 or motel, motel for people who are walking on, on journeys that they had a place where they could rest and uh, give them, uh, they could have meals there. So, he had also the Ben Adam Lechavero. He was very great. So this is why Abraham stands out to be the our father, Abraham Avinu. It's called Abraham Avinu. Our father. He built up the foundation for. Uh, when with certain uh, values and principles and he put in our nature and become a nature, a Jewish nature to have the the what is it? The, the behavior to be honest to hell and of course he taught his family and uh, Hashem said because I know he accepted him Hashem accepted him to be his man because he knew how he is uh, devoted and loyal to God, and that is what the mission said. He bells how Kulam. He did such so great things that he got the reward for the other uh, people there. <clears throat> so he protected, protected. Uh, uh, he brought, as I said, the beginning of. Of our, uh, of our Israel. I said to you last time that the difference between Noach and uh, Abraham 
There is such a thing that call in Yiddish, tzaddik and pelts. Means that the person, when it is very cold, you've got two ways how to react. Either you feel cold, you go and put on yourself hot, a clothes, and a fur coat, which is in English is called pelts. Or you are worried not only about yourself, you are worried about others. So you go and you make fire to bring heat that others can also warm themselves. This is Avram. Avram was not worried for himself. He was worried for the whole generation. Not like uh, Noah, that he just worried for himself, as I said, when Hashem said to him, go and build uh, the tower, and he didn't ask any questions. He built and didn't ask. Abraham on the other hand. When Hashem said to Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Amora. Because there was terrible uh, behavior of these two cities. And again, Hashem wanted to destroy them, not only because they were adultery. Hashem could have patience for that. But when the relationship to, towards other people, we say it's dumb, they were robbers, they were stealers, they, they were just anti, anti-social life. When Hashem said to Abraham, I'm going to, to bring, to, to destroy them, we find a long discussion that Abraham leads for them. And he said, maybe there are 10 people who are righteous. Maybe in their married, you change your mind. And Hashem said, no problem. If there are 10, I'll... Uh, I will not destroy. And, uh, and uh, he like arguing with God <clears throat> and say maybe not 10, maybe you get you'll have five. Hashem said, I accept what you're saying. The end of the story is there is no one in Sodom and uh, Amora who deserve to be saved. And this is what was that Hashem destroyed Sodom and Amor. But we see the difference between Abraham and Noach. And, uh, and, and then this is why Abraham became a favorite, so to speak, in God's eyes. And uh, Hashem made a covenant, a bridge with Abraham, which we are in a continue. And, uh, and the circumcision, a brit Mila, that uh, Abraham, the first one, was commanded to do, he did it when he was old man. I think it was 99 or 100, but this became, we call it Britoshel Avraham Avinu. Every circumcision of Brit, we say this is the Brit, the covenant that started with Avraham Avinu. So this is the introduction to the our mission that. Uh, I want to start with you, of course, at least only we start. And um, we speak about, as I said, it can be in your second Mishnah or third Mishnah. 
עשרה דורות מנוח עד אברהם, על תן ג'נריישן ביטווי נוח עד אברהם, להודיע כמה אורך אפיים לפניו, again to inform one thing, how great is God's patience that he was waiting, שכל הדורות היו מכניסים לפניו, all of those generations from נוח to אברהם generation made the Shem angry, עד שבא אברהם, אבינו וקיבל שכר כולם, ומטיל אברהם our father, this is Abraham, our father, he came and received the reward that was due to them all. So this is, I covered most of the time, case to understand what was the great, the great thing with Abraham that he became our father, the father of our Abraham, you got a minute left. Okay, Father of the Nation. For the minute. Uh, uh, an introduction to the next Mishnah, which we'll do in Mirza Hashem next week, about the uh, trials, the ten trials that Abraham went through. So with this, we say good Shabbos, and please God that we meet again. I hope that this time I wasn't so bad. Thank Fantastic. you, Rav. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've only got four. Thank you very much, Rav. Thank you. Shabbos, Rav. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Shabbos, everybody. Shabbos, everyone. Thank you.